Hey, how's it going? This is Rory from RateMyFuneral.com. That was Rate, by the way. So, welcome along to this, a quick tutorial on how I create this sphere, peely shape thing. Um, I needed to create this for a project I was working on, sat down to do it, and discovered I didn't know how to do it. Um, I had a little think, was, hmm, I'm not really sure the best way to do this, so I came up with a method. Um, no doubt there are a ton of different methods, um, but this one I thought was really useful anyway, because you can use this method for lots of other things. Um, but certainly just to create this, this is quite a nice way of doing it. So I thought I'd share it. So let's hop on in and we'll start at the beginning and see how we do it. So the first thing I want to create is a sphere, because this is going to be the the basis for our shape and I'm going to turn on under display Gurad shading lines just so that we can see a little bit of what we're doing um, and I'm also going to create a cube so I now have my sphere and my cube my cube is a bit big so I'm going to shrink that down to 10 by 10 by 10 so that's now a little cube and it's inside the sphere let's change view so if we go so that we can see all four views and um, with the sphere selected I'm going to press S on each of the windows just so it zooms in a bit and then zoom out there we go right now our cube I want to the very very top of the sphere and because I haven't changed the size of the sphere it's still a hundred centimeters that's very easy I just move the cube up 100 centimeters if you hold shift it moves it in 10 centimeter increments and there we go our sphere our cube is sitting at the top of our sphere now I know what you're saying, it's either, well, why are you doing that you crazy man, or it's, yeah I know this, but either way I'm going to carry on. So uh, with our cube, we want to put that inside our sphere, so that if we move the sphere, the cube goes with it. Now that we've put that inside our sphere, uh, we highlight the cube and go up here to MoGraph and then the Tracer object. Now because we had the cube highlighted, it is already linked in the tracer link. If you don't have the cube highlighted, check what is in there. If there's nothing in there, place the cube in there. Simple. Um, I am also going to turn off the sphere from the view uh, by making both of these red. And I'm going to make it so the cube is visible just by clicking until they're both green. So now I can see the cube, but I can't see the sphere, but the sphere is still there, so this is important. Now, I'm gonna give myself a bit more room because we're going to use the timeline to animate this. Uh, 200, and basically what we're going to do is trace the position of the cube. So the sphere, if I go to the coordinates, um, we want to, first of all, we need to get the cube down to the bottom. So if we animate this one, uh, we click in here, that sets a keyframe, and then we'll move forward 100 frames, and we'll just come around 180. So I'll just type that in, 180 degrees, and we'll keyframe click again. So now, if I press play, that's what we get. We get this kind of double semicircle, and if we look at it on the 3D view, we're actually getting four, and we're getting basically a line per vertice from the cube. So this is kind of what we want, but not quite what we want. So let's go into the tracer, go to object, and we're going to change trace vertices to off. <laughs> and then we'll do this again. And what we'll see is we now get our half. So we've, we've created an arch, which, yep, great. Almost, almost what we want. So back to the sphere, back to keyframe number one, and in our coordinate uh, we need to set a keyframe on zero for our H and then go back to 100. And let's just say, for example, say we put in 180 degrees in here. Let's have a look and see what that does. We'll start from the beginning and we'll animate again. And there we go, we've created a kind of curvy S. So we are on the way to what we want to do there. Um, let's try it with a bit more, uh, a bit, a bit of a higher number, so we'll keep on this keyframe and we'll put in 720. So that's obviously very specific, that's uh, you know several revolutions. And let's hit play on that. And there we can see we're now definitely a lot closer to the kind of thing that we want. Um, obviously still we want more, 
and I found you know um, a good amount for this is about four times 720 so we'll actually put that in so if we put in times four that automatically tells us what that is which is 2880 and we'll keyframe that making sure that we're definitely on position 100 and then we'll start that again and where hey 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 look at that go right so we've now created our kind of orange peel shape thing it's a bit jaggedy so we need to fix this in order to fix this we'll go into the tracer object and we'll set the type from linear to bezier and the immediate points uh, I've found um, uniform yeah with about eight seems to be about right and you can see that that's now made that nice and curly so that's great <clears throat> um, now we want to actually be able to do something with this and use this information what we can do is right click on our tracer and do current state to object and what that's done is created a duplicate of the tracer but as a spline so now we can actually use this for something so let's just move this down to the bottom we'll skip back to our starting frame and you'll see that the spline is still there which is great um, I'm going to turn off the cube now so that we can't see that just so it keeps it out of the way um, and now we need to give this some geometry so we can use a sweep object so if I hold alt with the tracer uh, selected it will put it inside the sweep object and then if I create maybe a you can do a, a, a circle or a rectangle or whatever so I'm going to create a rectangle and hold shift and that will put it inside of the sweep now obviously that's massive so that's created a bit of a strange shape so let's reduce this down we'll go say 10 10 so it's easy to see and there we can see we've created our kind of wibbly thing um, there's a couple of bits I want to do here so the rectangle maybe obviously this is now we've we've essentially done it so now what we're doing is just playing so we could maybe make it a bit thinner but a bit wider if you do 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 <laughs> if you do do that you might get some slightly odd shapes up the top here and in this case if you get this it's probably best just to go and manually alter the uh, the spline so I'll just switch the rectangle off so we can see and we go to point mode and make sure we're on the uh, the pointer there and we could probably remove maybe a couple of these top ones and maybe a couple of the bottom ones and then if we turn that back on there we go that's fixed that so that just makes that a bit neater um, the next thing I want to do is just sort out some of these jagged edges so in order to do the caps we do in the sweep we go to caps and fillet cap fillet cap and we'll constrain it so that it keeps it the same size and we'll reduce these by quite a bit so 0.3 or so um, and maybe give them two steps and that will make that a slightly more rounded edge and obviously for this sharp edge this is the rectangle so we'll set that to rounding and I'm going to reduce that to about 0.4 and then that will give us just a, a bit of extra geometry there to make that look a little bit sort of nicer and there we go we've created it that's that's pretty much it so um, just to finish off I'll just create the scene from the image at the start so the way I will do this will be we'll put a texture on it so we we'll double click to create a texture um, I made I did a black one so we'll just do slightly slightly off black uh, reflectance um, add a reflection legacy stick a touch of Fresnel in it obviously if you're using an older version than R16 all of this will be slightly different but it's all pretty much there check out my older tutorials and stuff for uh, if you're not sure about the way this works there's some that cover um, the differences um, but this is all pretty straightforward stuff so we've got a, a you know just a shiny black texture now um, that's probably a bit shy, too shiny so let's turn the uh, reflection strength down a bit there we go um, and I might just lower that specular there we go okay so we'll put that on our sweep and next um, we need to light the scene obviously I always uh, use my video for this you can light the scene however you want but for this all I do is just place that in move it to a bit lower down um, and I want this to sit neatly on the floor so the easiest way to do that is to actually um, uh, right click and set a simulation rigid body tag um, when I hit play obviously my tracer and my sphere are going to start doing stuff so I'm just going to switch those off so that they're not doing anything um, and then I'm just going to hit play 
and then that will make it just sit on the floor and I'll just pause it about there and then take the tag off. And now I know that that's sat nicely on the floor, uh, create a camera, um, maybe make it a bit of a, a tele zoom style one like that and put this out kind of over here. Find a good angle. There we go, that looks pretty nifty. Um, we've got some basic settings in here we can just tweak to make it look a bit better. So ambient occlusion, uh, maybe put that up a little bit um, just so it, it fills in the, uh, the, the roughness. Um, maybe make the ray length a bit longer so that the uh, ambient occlusion reaches a bit further. And I kind of like to put the contrast up a little bit just so that it stands out. So we can give that a go now and see how that looks. Um, so yeah, so this is it's really useful. There is, there's plenty that you can do with this. Um, there's, you know, all sorts of animation possibilities and, and stuff like that. Um, I'll tell you what I did forget to do. I just forgot to make the floor reflective. So just in Infideo, we'll just enable the floor reflection. Um, and maybe a little bit of reflection blur or something like that. Um, and then then hit, let's hit go again on that. Um, so yeah, so you can uh, animate the sweep so that the, the sphere actually uh, kind of generates itself, you know, and uh, yeah, there's there's just lots and lots of things you could do with it. So yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. I hope uh, that that's useful to you. Um, and if you do anything using that method, then send it to me on the website, on the, the uh, Facebook, on whatever, you know, make sure you're doing all of that. Uh, and I hope that is all good. Cool. All right. I'll catch you later. Bye.